in 1970, we were introduced to a semi-Western film called Little Big Man. It was directed by Arthur Penn and was based on the 1964 novel of the same name. Though it was categorized as a Western, it fit into a large amount of film genres, including comedy, drama, and adventure. It stars Dustin Hoffman, Chief Dan George, Faye Dunaway, Martin Balsam, Jeff Corey, and Richard Mulligan. Hoffman in the lead role plays a white man that's raised by members of the Cheyenne Nation during the 19th century. Through the progression of the boy's life, it shows the contrast in the lives of American pioneers and Native Americans. It really is one of the strangest westerns you'll ever see. It's almost a Forrest Gump with cowboys and Indians. Just the thought of Dustin Hoffman in a western seems absurd. But the film works very well due to an amazing script that sets aside all the previous cliches about the Old West. It starts with Hoffman and his sister being discovered by a Cheyenne Indian following a Pawnee Indian massacre of a wagon train. The Cheyenne means no harm to them, and they welcome the orphans into their tribe. The sister is completely convinced that the only reason that the tribe brought them back was to rape her, and she actually seems a little disappointed that they didn't. Hoffman's character spends many years with the tribe and is completely accepted and loved by everyone, but eventually he's rescued by whites and returned to a civilized life. It's at this point that it's pretty obvious that he was better off with the tribe. As a matter of fact, repeatedly throughout the film, he returns to the Indians and he seems much more happier there and it's almost that he views them as being the civilized ones. Hoffman's character of Jack Crabb is recounting his life as he resides in a hospice center while telling his story to a curious historian. In 1970, he's the oldest man in the world at 121 years old. As he tells his life story to the historian, he claims to have been captured by the Cheyenne, that he was a gunslinger and an associate of Wild Bill Hickok. He was also a scout for General George Armstrong Custer and was, in fact, the sole white survivor of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. The movie has a way of getting the audience to appreciate the Indian culture and its ways, making the point that civilization is not just determined by inventions and modern conveniences, but by attitudes and morals. This reframing of history is especially unique because it often shows the life from a fresh Indian perspective particularly how the killing of Custer and his troops at Little Bighorn wasn't necessarily a massacre like it is often portrayed. Little Big Man was the name of an actual historical figure. He was a Native American, Lakota, who was a fearless and respected warrior who fought under and was rivals with Crazy Horse. Now, the role of old Lodge Skins was played by Chief Dan George, and he became the first Native American to receive an Academy Award nomination for acting. They initially offered this role to Marlon Brando. He turned it down. The director's first choice for it was Laurence Olivier. That didn't work out, and Richard Boone was slated for the role. When Boone backed out at the last minute, Chief Dan George was given the part and he went on to be Oscar-nominated for it. Dustin Hoffman was put into the Guinness Book of World Records as the greatest age span portrayed by a movie actor, and this was for portraying the main character of Jack Crabb from a teenager to age 121. In order to get that raspy voice that you hear as he's interviewed, Hoffman would sit in his dressing room and scream at the top of his lungs, for an hour before he would record those scenes. The special effects department does an exceptional job with the makeup that they did for Jack Crabb. The old man face was covered with a 14-piece latex mask that was created by Dick Smith, and it took about five hours to apply. The results are unbelievable. He definitely looks like an old man. 
you would have no idea that it was Dustin Hoffman. Hoffman felt like playing this role was a terrible strain on him and was pretty rough to do. Prior to the filming, he had quit smoking for eight months, but he started it back again, blaming the struggles on the film as the reason. The character of Jack Crabb is partially based on Curly, one of Custer's Native American scouts from the Crow tribe. Curly rode with Custer's 7th Cavalry into the valley of the Little Bighorn, but was relieved of duty before the final attack retreating to a nearby bluff and witnessing much of the action. There are many conflicting stories from that era that embellished Curly's participation, stating in several cases that he disguised himself with a Cheyenne blanket to escape the immediate field of battle. He was interviewed many times, with some writers claiming that he was the only surviving witness from the U.S. side of Custer's last stand. He gave several variations on his participation in the battle, with the accuracy of most of these recollections being questioned. The Little Bighorn battle scenes were filmed on location in Montana near the actual battle site. Some of the town scenes were filmed in Nevada City, Montana, a town that by 1970 consisted predominantly of historic 19th century buildings brought from elsewhere in Montana. All the outdoor Indian scenes, other than the Little Bighorn, were filmed near Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The interior stuff was all shot on Hollywood sound stages. Old Lodgkins dies at the end of the novel, but not in the film. The director explained why they changed this and stated that they thought long and hard about this ending. And he did die in the first draft of the script. But the death introduced an element of sadness into the film that they just didn't want. Although Dustin Hoffman plays the younger, adopted son of Faye Dunaway's character in the film, he's actually four years older than Dunaway. Hoffman was born in 1937, while Dunaway was born in 1941. But once again, Faye Dunaway amazes audiences. Her shocking bathtub scene, where she gives Hoffman a bath, is one of the highlights of the film. She has a way of taking over a scene, exuding a sensuousness that few actresses can achieve. She did the same thing in The Thomas Crown Affair with Steve McQueen. She created one of the sexiest scenes ever done in Hollywood playing chess with McQueen. She's often been labeled that people dislike her or that she was difficult on the set. And I think that's just another way of saying that she was a perfectionist. She's even stated this herself. She says that everything is in the details, that she wants to get every scene right. Her view of this fact is that men are never described as being difficult when they want to do a superior job on the set. People say that they just have a lot of guts and they want to get the scene right. But when she tries to do the same thing, she's labeled as a pain in the ass. This movie is part tall tales, part satire, and part history. It's really very smart and funny. It takes a lot of sharp jabs at the old images of Indians. And Dustin Hoffman is brilliant in his role as Jack Crabb. Take a look back at this charming movie from 1970. If you like Forrest Gump, you'll love this film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.